You see the new Avatar film needs to make two billion to break even? Oh yeah, I did see that. It'll have to be the third or fourth highest grossing movie of all time just to break even. What a tall order. It will? I mean, I, I don't doubt that it will. I just don't see why it will. The first one was so forgettably boring. And this is already, fuck, 13 years later. So any hype that that franchise had, I feel, is long gone. But people watch it just for the novelty of being the sequel to the highest grossing film ever. And it's also just James Cameron. Do you see the news that Australian YouTuber named Friendly Geordie's got his house firebombed? Yep. I am a huge fan of Friendly Geordie's, and that was heartbreaking to see. The corruption there is unfucking real. George, I, I'm here. I'll, I'll briefly talk about it. So Jordy's, he's made a lot of content and highlighted a lot of corruption in both some organized crime as well as government. And he's been the target of a lot of hit pieces in Australia. There's been a lot of attacks on his character. There's been a lot of just awful shit. That has come from his fight for justice. And the most recent sad development is his house was firebombed. And what actually, it's even, it's a crazier story than even that leads it on to be. So his neighbor's house got firebombed the night before. I think it was the night before. And then when they realized it wasn't Jordy's house, they came back and then firebombed his actual house. Now the list of suspects is huge because he's reported on so much corruption. He's currently engaged in a lawsuit over something else, uh, another corrupt, uh, another corrupt organization. But he's also, like I said, highlighted some organized crime as well. So this could have been fucking anyone, and it's just so goddamn sad because he does incredible work. Imagine the neighbors. Oh, yeah, the neighbors had no fucking clue. Uh, he even did, like, a... Well, sh interviews, the wrong word. But he got ambushed by these fucking vultures here. And he gave, like, a short statement. And he seemed to be in relatively high spirits about it. So, that's good at least. But such a fucked situation. What about his neighbors? They got fucked for no reason. Well, he got fucked for no reason, too. Like, the, I think the way of proving that you're not a corrupt uh, government official is not to have someone firebomb the guy calling you a corrupt government official. Play the interview. Again, it's not really like an interview, but well, here, I'll play we it. We don't know who did it. Uh, there's a long list of suspects. My mind was racing as to who it is. Obviously, we've done some extremely uh, dangerous reporting over the last year, I suppose, of a bunch of extremely powerful people and corporations. There is many people that would want to do that. I obviously can't say who I suspect it is, but I do have like a short list in my head of who I think would have done it. I would hope that the New South Wales uh, strike force that is supposedly set up for fixated people and terrorists would be looking into this instead of a comedian and his team for six months straight at the whim of a previous Premier that all of you defended for his last 10 years and then when he came out and even after it was all the New York stuff you're still sitting there defending him now I saw all of your articles I love that he confronts them to their face all of the same little narrative that you write every time I would hope that you would put just as much attention on the fact that that happened as you have on trying to assassinate my character over the last year thanks for your time did something well, happen here a week no, ago Johnny? yep someone someone <sighs> Solid statement all around. He takes huge risks reporting on the stories that he does. Clearly. But he is like the only one that I know of that's doing like that kind of hard-hitting journalism. And the shit that he exposes is foul. John Barilaro. Yeah, John Barilaro is someone that I keep seeing pop up as a potential person who may have orchestrated this. It, again, it's, it's a pretty long list of people... With power that hate Jordy's, it, it could have been a lot of people. 
Thanks for the bits again, Harp. Uh, no update on the breast milk tier list uh, any day now, though. <clears throat> Probably one of your worst ideas. The breast milk tier list? Well, I beg to differ. You want to hear a worse idea I had? I thought it would be super fun to kind of do what Jackass did, where you do like a, a sperm potency test. You see who's got the strongest swimmers, all that. But I thought it'd be fun if we went the extra mile. So after deducing who amongst us has like the best sperm, like whoever is like, you know, most breedable, I thought we should then donate that sperm and see who can have the most kids from that. And we'd keep track over the years, like who had the most kids, who fathered the most kids through the donations. And then we'd check in on them every year and do like an Olympics kind of thing, like who has the most talented kids, right? So we'd have like a little competition. And we do that yearly. See? Like, that's a much worse idea. <laughs> wow, that's unhinged. It is a, it's a long-term idea. All that for the science. Well, it's more of a competition than a science. Why do devs keep releasing broken games knowing full well people will freak out? I, I wish I would stop hearing that question. The answer is obvious. Look at these sales numbers. I, I thought the first article would be about the sales numbers. It has sold over 10 million units already. Oh, here we go. Sets new record. Yeah. Like, it's there's just no reason to even bother releasing it polished or fleshed out. The more you can release, the more money you're going to... Jesus, the more money you're going to make because the fans are going to buy it anyway. It's just that simple. The game doesn't need to be good. It doesn't need to be in a playable state it just needs to come out and that's it i think they're losing longevity nope i guarantee clip it i guarantee the next pokemon game if it comes out next year i don't know if it will i don't know if they're planning to continue yearly releases but regardless of when it comes out it is also going to do incredible sales numbers been less than a year since the last pokemon yeah i think that was just like a rare occurrence though I don't think they're going to be releasing two Pokemon games a year. I think this was just a special circumstance. You're going to love if you're wrong. It, you're going to love it if you turn out to be wrong about the Pokemon thing. I Yeah, I'd love to be wrong about it. I would love for the day to come where Game Freak pushes it too far and they release a game that actually doesn't load. And people still somehow defend it and it still breaks sales records. I think that would be great. I hope they continue to make the games worse and worse and worse. I want to see what the level is where people finally stop going crazy for it and defending it. Outside of the bugs, the game's better than Sword and Shield, though. I agree. I do agree. 100%. Doesn't change the fact that it's in a completely unacceptable state for a $60 game. I, I just don't really like the DMZ mode. I'm just not a fan of the extraction genre. Twitter's mad because the God of War director wants to do a Castlevania game. Oh, I did see that. I wouldn't say that it was like some big meltdown about him. It was just a lot of bad takes from people that didn't even play the game to begin with. Saying that they'd rather their franchise be dead than in the hands of... Uh, the God of War director, which is a wild take. No, it's not even gatekeeping. It was just delusion. Legitimately, no one that was giving their takes in there has even played the new God of War game. And yet they all felt so knowledgeable on it that they would say that he the, the whole game is nothing but 50 minutes of cutscene and 2 minutes of gameplay. Which is the most exaggeratory shit ever. It is very story and cinematic driven. But there is an extreme amount of gameplay in between that. Like, it's not even close. That argument would work for something like Uncharted. Uncharted has probably more cutscenes than gameplay, but I imagine they love Uncharted. I feel like they were just targeting God of War because it's new. But yeah, most of them had never even played the game, but we're saying Castlevania's better off staying dead than letting it go to the God of War director. Castlevania's dead. Lol, what? Castlevania's probably the most dead major franchise at the moment. Castlevania hasn't had a, like, mainline entry since fucking, uh... 
what was it, Lords of Shadow, when they tried to do something different and it was terrible. And that was like fucking 12 years ago now. The games are just dead. The only thing Konami uses Castlevania for is uh, pachinko machines and slots. The anime? What? Well, yeah, the anime is something totally different. I'm talking about games. In the bits cave. F Zero is way more dead. F Zero might be more dead, but I don't think F Zero was ever as big as Castlevania used to be. F Zero was big, but I think Castlevania was always bigger 